I was under the impression that there were only five classes in this academy, and that students were split among them based on their social class and home region. We now have a sixth class, fittingly titled Class 7. And in Class 7, we recognize no distinction between nobles and commoners. Trails of Cold Steel is finally heading west after being in Japan since 2013, and where a sequel has already been released. So is it worth it, or does it leave us a little cold? We've really enjoyed our time with Trails of Cold Steel, and feel it's definitely one of the strongest titles on Vita, and another great title in the PS3's expansive library because, sadly, it hasn't made its way to PS4, and seemingly neither will the sequel, although the third game is likely to do so. This review is based on playing the PS3 version, and whilst it clearly won't be one of the best looking games of 2016, it certainly will be able to hold its own in other aspects. Neon Falcom are far from a big name outside of Japan, but this title shows that they definitely deserve to be. Trails of Cold Steel follows Class 7 at Thor's Military Academy, which is the only class that mixes both nobles and commoners of Erebonia. The story follows the class as they learn to get along and accept each other and themselves, and has a strong focus on the class system and how it's crumbling away. Nobles and commoners are still largely at odds with each other, and many don't think that they should be mingling, but it's become clear that this way of thinking is outdated. There are also threats of civil wars and Class 7 has been formed as an experiment to create the best unit possible for battle. It's certainly a slow burner with the opening hours explaining how the game works, and the game has an abundance of dialogue, which can take a good 6 or so hours to sift through, but it's worth sticking with. The game is turn-based and has a large cast of characters to play around with, and there are clear influences from Persona where character bonding and free time is concerned, which we're happy to see as we love learning more about characters in RPGs like this. You can take four people into battle, who each will have specific abilities in the form of magic and unique crafts, which take two turns usually to charge, and ranges that make them perfect for specific or mobs of enemies, though you can make it work by just taking your favorites into battle. There's a link system where you can pair two characters together to back one another up with follow-up attacks and such, which makes racking up damage far easier than working alone as it's essentially a free attack without using up a turn. There's an in-depth customization system where you can set abilities to each character so that you can build them as you'd like them to be by using Quartz, which work with the character's Arcus equipment, which aids them in battle to bring out their full potential, to enhance their stats, recovery, and new skills. The game does prompt you to building a certain character one way as, of course, the characters do have obviously predetermined roles, but you can tweak this a little, although this likely won't appeal to those outside of the hardcore crowd. We liked keeping the characters as they were initially introduced. You have free time to do side missions, or to bond with other characters and learn more about them, although you can only do this so many times per day, so it's wise to focus on your favourites first, as it's not guaranteed that you'll max all bonds in your first playthrough. There is a lenient calendar system that keeps you on a loose leash, but keep an eye on it if there are any quests or bonds you specifically wish to do. You can fast travel to places, which is an excellent mechanic, especially with how big the areas are, and when you take on several side missions, the map itself is easy to read and useful too. You're unlikely to get lost, which is great as the game can sometimes be a bit overwhelming. Visually, the game isn't breaking any ground, but that's to be expected from a game that originally released in 2013. Character design, outfits, fast open areas and dungeons have clearly had a lot of effort and thought put into them and this shines through despite the dated graphics. Like the story itself, there's plenty of love and care taken here, and a lot more detail and depth involved than we'd necessarily expect. The game's audio is also impressive, with a praiseworthy English dub, as is the norm with NIS America, and a memorable OST that could more than easily find its way onto your choice of audio player. Some notable voice talent includes Kaiji Tang, Carrie Karenin, Marisha Ray, and Ben Diskin, and whilst we have no complaints, we wouldn't have minded hearing Yui Hori in the Japanese voiceover, but sadly, only the English dub is included. It'd be a shame to see this put anyone off, as the English dub really is great. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is a mostly traditional JRPG that will scratch the itch you may have for turn-based games. Its in-depth and lengthy story, fleshed out gameplay and excellent art design and audio make it an easy recommendation and another great release from NIS America. If you're looking for a game that you can easily sink your time into, 
then Trails of Cold Steel should do that for you, even if it does take several hours to really get going. Trails of Cold Steel 2 is already confirmed for a Western release, with a third game in development, so there's no better time to play the first game in the trilogy. <laughs>